Hey guys, in today's video, we're going to be talking about one of the most affordable and easy to use printers I've seen in a long time, and I never expected this from an Ender. This is the Ender 3 V3KE, and this thing is super easy. We're talking about 10 to 15 minutes to put it together, put some filament, no leveling, and it prints. And it prints really good too. So, we're going to check out the printer, we're going to look at all the features, and we'll see why this is a really affordable entry-level printer uh, for anyone who's looking to get into 3D printing. Let's go ahead and check it out. Now, the Ender 3 V3KE is an affordable entry-level printer that requires little to no 3D printing knowledge. And that is something that has changed quite a bit over the last several months and, I would say, over the last year. This is a printer that has hands-free leveling. All you do is put it together and it maybe has, I think maybe six screws that you have to put in. And then once you've done that, you put in some filament and you're ready to print. The print bed is 220 by 220 by 240. And this thing is fast. We're talking about 300 millimeters per second, all the way up to 500 millimeters per second. To give you a sense of what printer used to print like before, just earlier in the year, you're looking at printers that were printing maybe, you know, 15 millimeters per second. So this is significantly faster. Acceleration of 8,000 millimeters per second has a direct drive extruder, 300C max nozzle temperature, which means it's going to give you a lot of flexibility when it comes to different filament, and then 100C on the bed. It has a PEI flex plate, and then it has USB as a means to load print. You can use Wi-Fi or Creality Cloud. We did all our uh, printing using the Creality application, right? So we just sent things wirelessly. Uh, you can print PLA, PETG, ABS, TPU, and ASA on it and it's capable of creating a 15 minute benching. So uh, one of the things I will say is that all of our testing we did was, was just pure PLA. That's the most common material out there. And even though it says that it can print PETG, ABS, uh, TPO, some of these other materials, I find that those materials, depending on the environment that you're in, because it's an open printer and it's not an enclosed printer, you, you, you could run into some warping issues. So uh, we really looked at all the PLA uh, that we typically print and we did print quite a bit. So let's check out some of the prints. All right, so we did quite a bit of uh, printing. And this, I believe, is a print file from Clockspring. And this uh, came out super duper clean. Really, really nice um, detail here. And again, no tweaking whatsoever to the actual slicer profile. I used everything that was out of the box. You can see a real nice first layer there. Now. That one turned out to be really nice. Here's one that did not turn out to be really nice. And I'm going to show you once we get closer to the printer, some of the things I ran into. Uh, this is a really, really bad Benchy. And what I noticed was after I started running the prints, the re this is my very first print, by the way, um, I noticed that the print bed was wobbly. It was shaky. But there's no screws to you know tighten the actual bed. If you lift up the PEI sheet, there's four screws. I tightened those four screws using the included Allen wrench. And then uh, my prints went from something that looks like this, which you can see is not good, to something that looks like this, just by tightening that bed. So quite a bit improvement over the print. Uh, this was a fast Benchy, right? So this is their, their fastest uh, printing Benchy. And you know, given that this is such an affordable printer and for its size, I was pretty happy with the overall quality here. I'm sure tweaked, it could be better. Uh, the next thing we did is we printed out uh, a scraper. You know, we're here in the Midwest and snow is going to get here really soon. So I thought I'd go ahead and print this guy. Uh, did a really nice job. Great first layer. And you can see the top layer here, how nicely this printer uh, printed it. And then what we did is uh, we do a lot of jigs. So this is a jig that we uh, created for a laser engraver. Uh, and the one thing I will say is that there's some elephant foot compensation that could take place right here. I can feel the lip right here, how it comes off. That's something that you can fit, uh, fix in the actual software. Probably using Orca Slicer um, is what I would use because, you know, you get that kind of lip going all the way around. But then the rest of this part came out pretty good. Uh, and this is, again, using Creality um, Hyper PLA that was included uh, with the package. The next thing that we did is we printed out a toaster, uh, torture toaster from Clockspring. And for the most part, a lot went well. So, you know, some of the things uh, obviously failed a bit. Uh, when we got into, into this right here, uh, these uh, portions were kind of locked. So I was a little disappointed. 
with this, but I think that it's this brim that's right here. And if I were to clean off that brim, and you can see as soon as I uh, force that, it moves nicely. The torture uh, or the toaster, uh, one of the spots is working. The other one is is loose, but it didn't work. Uh, you can see over here how things look inside. And then you can see on this side over here, uh, some of the tolerance, um, you know, when you, as you start looking at all these, you know, these were off fused. I noticed this as well. Now, again, I don't know if this is part of the cooling, part of the slicing software that I used, or what it could be. Uh, but again, these parts open nicely, but I'm not able to actuate any of these right here. So um, outside of that, I thought the, the model was a nice, it was a clean model, just which all the parts were. Now, as we were looking at some of the quality of the prints, I shared with you one of the benchies that came out uh, pretty horrific. And we're gonna go ahead and take a look at this benchy again. This is the Benchy that I printed, and you know what? Yep, it's in that horrific line. Not a good-looking Benchy. But then all of a sudden, I was able to get it to look like this. So let's make sure that's in focus right there so you can see what that looks like. And you're, you know what? This is not a bad-looking Benchy. This is a good-looking Benchy. What did I do differently? Well, let me show you just in case you guys run into this as well. So underneath here uh, in the bed, you're going to notice that there are four screws. These are um, Allen based and what I noticed is that this was loose and typically I do check printers when we put this together to make sure that everything is nice and tight but because this one doesn't really have any kind of leveling screws eh, I didn't really check and I did notice that there was a wobble so what I did is I ended up tightening those four and then it cleaned things out perfectly now the cool thing about this bed is that it does have also the PAI sheet and you can see that how this PAI sheet has those cutouts right there, which I actually love because it just makes it so easy just to get, you know, when you're gonna get your, your sheet down, you know, you just put it like this and it aligns really nicely. So you're able to get these, these screws right here to align really nicely with this, uh, with this bed or the sheet. So prints were printing fine, things were coming off, great first layer adhesion. Now, this printer is also really quiet given the size. And one of the things that you'll notice is that I'm running this with a little generator there on the side, which is a Jackery 1000 um, generator. And it's more than enough to be able to power this. A couple things that you'll also notice is that uh, there's really no other you know, adjustment parts when it comes to, to this printer uh, because of how simple this is to use. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and run one of the print jobs. And as it's running, we'll take a look at the extruder. We'll take a look at some of the other areas. Now, looking at the software itself, the software is pretty much what you would expect from a Creality printer. You can see all the things that I printed are also here. So that torture toaster took 14 minutes, uh, 14 hours to print, almost 15. The actual scraper that you see right here took two hours um, and 30 uh, minutes to print, and then the actual um, that actual vase took five hours to print. The shot glass jig that I, uh, that I created, that's my design, that was around 45 minutes to print. So this is giving to give you a sense of everything that's going on. And then the Benchy, you can see right here, the Benchy was around 15 minutes, 16 minutes to print. So you can see all the history of everything that was printed, which I really like. On the USB, there's only one thing, and that's that Benchy. If you go into settings, here you'll be able to see... Again, your network connectivity, camera, there is none, but you know, I'm expecting that if there's a camera setting here, there could be an add-on that you can add a little bit later. And then you have, again, your, your log as well as FAQ. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and, oh, let me show you this area right here. So here you can actually choose your, uh, to extrude, right? So if you wanna extrude filament, uh, you can also work with your home but there's really nothing you have to do here as soon as you set this up and it does its leveling auto leveling and it does the input shaping you don't have to do anything else now it does have a filament runout sensor i don't have it connected as you can see here i did test it out it worked fine i just disconnected it from my testing and then uh, i'm using the hyper series pla from creality now this print head seems to be uh, updated really updated and there's a couple things that i'll highlight first of all it has a Beal touch in the back uh, that you can't see right now, but we'll show that in a couple seconds. You do have here your filament uh, release lever right here. Um, and this is obviously where you would feed in your filament. Now cable management here is really nice. You can see, and this is super quiet. You can see your Beal touch right here. It's gonna go down and level. 
this is, again, whisper, whisper quiet. I'm really used to uh, Creality printers being very loud, especially with the K1 Max and the K1. They're very loud printers. This one, though, is super silent. So if you don't have a dedicated space and you have a common space where you're going to be using your 3D printer, this is going to work. Now, the other thing I'll highlight is that I do find that uh, the temperature on this printer goes up pretty fast. You can see how quickly it made it up to 180. That was pretty fast. And right now what it's doing is it's heating up also uh, the actual bed temperature. We'll see it bump up as it moves forward. So uh, I also like the fact that you can actually see the image of the of, or the thumbnail of what you're going to be printing. Okay, so now we're off. We're printing out a uh, Benchy. And I want to show you how quiet this machine is. going to stay quiet. That's not bad, and the fan is running too. So guys, that wraps up our review. See you in the next video.